endemic. When it comes to COVID, the word is being thrown around by seemingly everyone. Endemic. 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 But what does it actually mean? And is COVID already endemic? If not, will it ever be? And what does it mean for our much awaited return to normal? I'm gonna share three key factors that'll help us understand how we get to an endemic state, and I'll answer those questions along the way. Let's dive in. Something we should get out of the way now is that endemicity doesn't actually mark the end of COVID, or a clean-cut end to the pandemic. And while we're defining things, pandemic means that there are large outbreaks in multiple continents. But endemic is just another stage of our life with any virus, including the one that causes COVID. Now that we have that clear, let's check the dictionary to understand what endemic actually means. Persisting in a population or region, generally having settled to a relatively constant rate of occurrence. Huh, okay. So this definition is a little wordy, but it suggests that a disease that is endemic occurs regularly and in a certain population or region. Let's start with regularly, our first key factor in understanding endemic. What the definition is saying is that there needs to be a regular rate of infection or baseline for a disease to be endemic. As you can see, that hasn't been the case for COVID. Knowing what the steady state of a disease looks like is really important for establishing endemicity. That's because it allows experts to identify whether cases are higher than usual, meaning there's an outbreak or an epidemic going on. Even when a disease is endemic, there can still be surges in cases because it isn't gone. Its presence is just more predictable. So how long is it gonna be until we figure out what that steady predictable state or baseline is for COVID? To answer that question, I spoke with Lisa Lee, an infectious disease epidemiologist at Virginia Tech. There is no hard and fast rule. It's not after X number of months. It's important to remember that what we expect or will tolerate around the number of cases also varies. Wait, what we'll tolerate will vary, but how? That brings us to our second factor in understanding endemic, location. Endemic isn't one size fits all. And that's in part because different places have different political and social will and capacity, public health capacity to manage a disease, to um, respond in a timely manner, that kind of thing. Responding in a timely manner depends on access to drugs, tests, and vaccines, plus healthcare capacity. That differs depending on where you are. With COVID, we can end up in a situation where it's endemic or stable in some places, but causing persistent outbreaks in others. And there's another wrinkle. Like those definitions said, endemic diseases occur in a certain population or region. As long as COVID is raging worldwide, instead of only in certain places, then we technically haven't reached endemicity. That's because infections in one place can complicate efforts to contain the virus in others. That's what happened with Omicron. Every time the virus transmits, we know it gets a little smarter in the sense that it can create variants to become more contagious or more lethal. It has done both of those things. Getting to an endemic state is kind of like a tug of war between us and the virus that causes COVID. But that tug of war isn't just about regularity, location, or viral evolution. Endemicity also has to do with how much social disruption and death we're willing to accept. In other words, it has to do with us and our own perception of risk. There needs to be a mental shift, which is our third key factor in understanding endemic. Flu, for example, can kill thousands of people every year, more in a particularly bad one. And we have generally come to the conclusion that that is something we can live with. Now that doesn't minimize, of course, the, the pain and suffering of people who do lose their loved ones to influenza, but it is something that we've said, okay, this is about the background weight rate we're willing to tolerate. We don't know yet what that background rate is for COVID, but in certain parts of the world, our perception of COVID risk is shifting, thanks to vaccines and new antivirals. Among people who are vaccinated, the risk of ending up in the hospital is pretty low. In the US, mask mandates are ending, governments are easing restrictions, and increasingly, social distancing seems a thing of the past. That represents a mental shift towards endemicity. So what does all this mean for our much-awaited return to normal? Omicron may have offered us a preview of our COVID future. We were starting to feel like we were getting back to normal when it emerged, and then boom, a surge. That means back to normal won't look like a return to 2019, but rather something new. We'll have to stay vigilant about what variants are out there and how well our vaccines and drugs work against them. Maybe COVID will be seasonal like the flu, or maybe it'll be an all-year affair. We just don't know yet. 
It's important to remember that whatever endemicity ends up looking like, people will still get really sick and some people will still die. I think the biggest misconception people have about what endemic means is it's kind of a safe level. Endemicity is not the end of COVID. It just means it's more predictable. And whatever case levels we tolerate might differ by location based on our medical resources and our collective comfort level with risk. How are you adjusting to our new COVID normal? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching y gracias.